The Buddha of our era is Gautama Buddha. What Buddhists do is to rediscover the liberating Dhamma and teach it to the world. This period when the Dhamma exists is called the Buddha's Dispensation or Buddha Sasana. While the essence of truth remains the same, what is known and remembered by people gets degenerated over time, until one day it will cease to exist even as a memory. Once the Dhamma disappears, the way to Nibbana is lost, and we will have to wait for the next Buddha to reappear to discover the way. The Buddha lies at the apex of spiritual achievement. A person who dedicates himself to the goal of becoming a Buddha is called a Bodhisattva. The term Bodhisattva means one bound for awakening, or one seeking awakening. There are two approaches to liberation. That is by becoming an Arahant or becoming a Buddha. An Arahant gains liberation by following the teaching of an existing Buddha. The path is known as Svavaka Yana, which means the vehicle of listeners. The higher and more difficult path is to become a fully enlightened Buddha. The path is known as Bodhisattva Yana. The journey to become a fully enlightened Buddha is much more challenging and a longer one than becoming an Arahant. Some people are under the impression that the followers of the Theravada tradition follow the Arahat ideal, while those under the Mahayana tradition follow the Bodhisattva ideal. This is not quite correct. All Buddhist traditions consider the Bodhisattva path to be the highest goal. In every Buddhist tradition, whether Theravada, Mahayana, or Vashayana, there are followers striving under the Bodhisattva path. However, in the Theravada tradition, a person can choose to follow the Arahat ideal. If he feels that the path of becoming a Buddha is much too long and difficult. Furthermore, he is happy to practice the path shown by the Buddha and can make good spiritual progress through the attainment of sainthood. When does one start to be a Bodhisattva? The journey starts when one is confirmed as a Bodhisattva by an existing Buddha. For Gautama Buddha, this occurred when he met the Pankara Buddha who confirmed him as a future Buddha many aeons ago. In that life, his name was Sumedha, and he lived as an ascetic in the mountains. One day, he came down to the village and saw that the villagers were preparing a road for the Pankara Buddha. Sumedha joined the villagers to prepare the road but it was not completed in time when the Pankara arrived in the village with the other monks. It had rained the night before. When Sumedha saw the Pankara Buddha walking down the road towards a large puddle, he threw himself across the water so that the Buddha and the other monks would walk over his body like a human bridge. When the Pankara Buddha caught sight of Sumedha, he straight away recognized his great potential to become self-enlightened. He walked three times around Sumedha and prophesied that he would be a future Buddha. With that confirmation, Sumedha started his spiritual journey as a Bodhisattva, a Buddha-to-be. According to the Theravada tradition, to become fully enlightened, a Bodhisattva must practice ten virtues, known as Parami in Pali. The ten Paramis are 
generosity, morality, renunciation, wisdom, energy, patience, truthfulness, determination, loving kindness, and equanimity. Anyone aspiring for Buddhahood must fulfill the ten paramis up to the stage of paramatta parami. That is the supreme level of practice. At this level, he is prepared to make many sacrifices of his possessions and parts of his body, such as his eyes, head, flesh, blood, and limb, including his life. The Bodhisattva goes from life to life, perfecting these ten virtues until he emerges as the perfect human being in his last birth. The journey to become a Buddha takes a very long time. We are not talking about years, hundreds of years, thousands of years, or even hundreds of thousands of years. But in cosmic time, known as an aeon or kalpa, which is a very long time, encompassing the entire world cycle. A world cycle covers the process from the formation of the world system up to its dissolution. The Buddha has given a simile to explain the vastness of time for a kalpa or an aeon. Now suppose there is a huge solid rock of one yojana long, one yojana wide, and one yojana high without a crack and not exposed to the elements of nature. A yojana is said to be around 7 kilometers. So once every 100 years, a person comes around and rubs with a soft silken cloth against it. How long do you think for this solid 7 kilometers cube of mountain rock be completely worn down? The Buddha said that this solid mountain of rock will wear out faster than the duration of a kalpa. So you, can you conceive how long this period is for a kalpa? Now, there are many Buddhas before Gautama Buddha, and there will be many Buddhas after him, stretching across world systems and time. In the 28 Buddhas Parita, Dipankara was listed as a fourth Buddha, while Gautama was the 28th Buddha. This means that since his confirmation by Dipankara, Sumedha had to keep striving as a Bodhisattva through 23 Buddhas before he finally became enlightened as the 28th Buddha. Had he wanted to become an Arahant and be free from the realms of rebirth, he could have achieved this during the time of Dipankara Buddha or any of the 23 Buddhas. He had enough paramis to achieve sainthood. But his goal was not to gain release as an Arahant, but to be a fully self-enlightened Buddha. So his journey was much longer, a journey of many more lifetimes and world cycles. Buddhas are extremely rare. In some of the world cycles, you have only one Buddha. In some, there are two, or three, or four Buddhas. In our world cycle, which is considered to be a very fortunate and rare one, there are five Buddhas. But the most common type of world cycle is that there is no Buddha at all. And this period is known as Sunya Kappa, or empty aeon in which no Buddhas exist. Even during these periods, these barren periods, the Bodhisattva has to keep on cultivating his paramis. Did the Buddha make any prediction about the next Buddha? In our world cycle, four Buddhas have already appeared. They are Buddha Kakusanda. Kona Gamana, Kasapa, 
and Gautama. The fifth Buddha is called Maitreya, derived from the Pali word Metta, or Maitreya from the Sanskrit word Maitri, because he is supreme in love and kindness. In the Buddhist world, you will see statues of Maitreya Buddha who is seated on a throne. In China, he is depicted as the laughing Buddha. Devotees of Maitreya Buddha make the aspiration to be born during his time so that they can receive his teachings and be enlightened. Maitreya Buddha can give you confirmation if you aspire to be a future Buddha. The coming of Maitreya Buddha was predicted in the Chakavati Sihananda Sutta, the lion's roar on the wheel-turning emperor. The discourse mentioned that with the decline of morality, the Dharma will disappear in the future. There comes a time when things get so bad that life will be miserable. A devastating war will occur that leads to massive destruction worldwide. After the war, people will realize that they should at least start observing one precept. With the practice of the first precept, things got better, so they decided to increase their observance to two precepts, and eventually up to five precepts. With better morality, the human lifespan will increase, and this will set the stage for the coming of the next Buddha, Maitreya. Maitreya Buddha will be endowed with wisdom and conduct and all the qualities of a fully enlightened Buddha. He will preach the Dhamma and all his purity and will have a large body of monastic and lay followers. An important point to note is Maitreya Buddha cannot arise as long as the dispensation of Gautama Buddha is around. Hence, Buddhists do not accept the claims by some people that the future Buddha has already appeared. You should aim to get liberation during the dispensation of Gautama Buddha or Maitreya Buddha. If you miss that, then it is rather unfortunate, because after Maitreya Buddha, there will be no more Buddhas appearing for many world cycles. These are the Sunya Kappa, empty world cycles. So you have to wait for a very long time to meet a Buddha and receive his teaching. When we learn about the tremendous effort and striving that are required for a person to become a Buddha, it makes us fully appreciate the attainment of our teacher, Gautama Buddha. He has gained liberation through his dedicated effort and has shown us the path of liberation. The Buddha Dharma is not a way among many ways, but the only way for liberation. For a teaching to lead to liberation, it must contain the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. With the advent of the Buddha, the way to Nibbana, which has previously been lost, is made clear again. The true significance of the Buddha's life and the real value of his work for humanity is given in several Pali texts. In the Samyutta Nikaya, the Buddha declares, So long as the moon and sun has not arisen, the world will be shrouded in darkness, and there is no way to tell the night from day and the months or seasons of the year. But when the moon and sun arise in the world, the great light will dispel darkness. We can tell the difference between the night and day, the month and the seasons of the year. In the same way, so long as the Buddha has not arisen in the world, there is gross darkness of bewilderment without knowledge of the Four Noble Truths. Once the Buddha has arisen, a great light has shined forth in the world with the proclamation and teaching of the Four Noble Truths.